Hello, my name is Volker and I built a mini cannabis grow box. And now it's time for an update for the version 2 and the main update is a better LED grow light. Let me show you. This is the new light and has a special combination of LED chips and colors on it that will make our plants grow better and give us a better yield. And I will now explain the science behind it. When looking at many different grows in the Tomato 10 online community, I noticed something strange. Every now and then, there would be plants that remained very short. They would have buds and all, but they were very short. So when I investigated why those plants were short, turns out it happened because the distance between the LED grow light and the plant was 12 inches or less. Whenever the LED was this close to the plants, they would remain short. And as soon as the light was raised higher, the plants started to stretch out again. Many people will say, of course those plants remain short because they are way too close to the LED. The light is so intensely bright that the plant will not grow, it will remain short. And it's true. Generally, the recommended distance between LED and plants is at least 24 inches or something. But to me, that never made much sense. Because look at this experiment here. I got a light meter. It measures the light intensity. And I measure at 12 inches under the light. And it's 1220 micromules per second. But if I go outside on a moderately sunny day and I measure the sun, it goes much higher than that. It goes 2000 micromules. And everybody who has grown cannabis outdoors knows that those plants will not remain short and small, even though sunlight is brighter than our LED grow light. There must be something else going on here. So to figure this out, I went to the world's biggest university. It's called youtube.com. It may sound a bit like a joke because YouTube is not a university, but there are lots of highly qualified scientists uploading their findings there. And one of them is Dr. Bruce Buckby from Utah State University. He is doing research together with his undergrads. They are sponsored by NASA and USDA. So this is proper interesting stuff. And these guys made an experiment. They took four equal grow chambers, also called grow tents. Two of them were using white LED grow lights and the others were using red and blue. They had been given a light intensity of 350. They were using salad plants and all the same amount of plants everything is the same eventually they measured the harvest they gotten out of it two tents with 100 units of salads these are the same and then we have two which have 127 135 so of course then these two are the winners because they produced the biggest harvest we need to know what was different in these two tents the difference was that these tents had far red light added to them 50 ppfd of those 350 ppfd was far red and that made the plant grow more. Light, as you may know, is made up of different colors. Blue, green, yellow, etc. That's why we have rainbows. All these colors mixed together appear white. Each color has a different effect on plants. The blue light inhibits cell expansion. That means it reduces growth. So plants that are given lots of blue light have short branches, smaller leaves and smaller buds. Green photons help the plant grow, but the main reason why we put them into grow lights these days is because they make the light appear white. Without green light, we have purple. And with white light, we can see if there's a nutrient deficiency. We can see if there's a pest. Red photons are for photosynthesis. They really help the plant grow. And then the latest research focuses on far red photons. And these enhance cell expansion. Plants that are given far red have longer branches, bigger leaves and bigger buds. Sunlight is loaded with far red light. There's one thing here which we need to add and that's high intensity. So high brightness will also lead to inhibited cell expansion. Back to our plants. These have been kept in high intensity light and that light did not contain any far red. That means short plants. LED lights were made for us humans. They were not mainly designed to grow plants under it. It was just the marijuana people that came along and started using them. They work well, but they are not nearly as good as sunlight. So what to do? Well, we could make our own LED grow light according to Dr. Bugby's research. And that's what I did. It started out with just a drawing and then I came to this design here. It had more far red than any other LED light. 
I went ahead and had somebody design a circuit board for this. That's the circuit board here. But when I went to a manufacturer to make this, it was impossibly expensive. Because if you make a new circuit board, they will have to set up the machine and it costs a lot of money. It became clear that I was not going to be able to make my own LED light. I kept ordering weird LED grow lights from China just to try them out and eventually I came across something good. This is an existing design and the factory agreed to let me change the chips to whatever I want them to be. Okay, remember Dr. Bugby's colors of the rainbow? Here, Here they, they are again. again. And let's see how we have them in this LED grow light. The blue, green and red light comes from all the white Samsung chips. These chips produce light for human eyes. It is not that great for plants yet. We need to add something more. And that is far red light. There are four far red chips already there. And then this panel is still a prototype and it has two UV ultraviolet chips. But are we getting rid of those? And instead I put more far red in. Some people may say UV ultraviolet is important for plants, but I couldn't find evidence for that. And also it's probably dangerous for our eyesight, so I got rid of them. And the last thing we add is a lot of red. Red is for efficient photosynthesis and it's kind of like the bread and butter for our plants. So we have a lot of these. The red and far red chips are quality units made by Cree, an American company. They are high powered chips. One of them makes as much or more light than four of the white ones. Here you can see a red one and a far red one. The far red one is the dim one because our eyes cannot see far red very well. These LEDs also have a clear plastic lens on top of them so they focus the light towards the plants. The light also has a switch to turn on and off the reds and the far red. Uh, I don't think that switch is really needed, but it was already there, so we have it. But you would probably just leave the reds on all the time. Are you interested in tracing the electrical current? Firstly, it goes through all of these chips. They are all in series, one after the other. Then the current goes back together and then they go through the high power chips. Before we had the same current go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strings of LEDs and now they go through two strings of LEDs. So it's about four times the current going through these high power chips. Now it splits back up and goes through the white ones again and so on. This panel runs at 105 volt DC, 0.69 amps. And if we multiply these two values, then we have the power that this panel uses in tomato 10, 72.5 watts. The panel could be run at up to 120 watts, but for tomato tent we don't need more than 72. In theory we can now hang this closer to the plants without the plants remaining short. Now this board we cannot run it just like this because it would overheat. I had something special manufactured for tomato tent where we mount this on. Today I received those goods. It's three big pallets and they have been delivered today. Let me quickly show you. These ones here and lots of them here. And I will now unbox one and see how this turned out. The LED PCB gets attached here to this cold metal case that cools the LED down. The cooler LEDs run, the longer they last and the more light they make. So it's important we run them very cool. And this is what the light looks like. It's just funny because this is the first one of this shipment I unpacked and the very first one it's already missing this cover here. This cover is here. But there's none here, which I hope the other ones are better. Now we have two filters running. One filter down here, the first one. The air goes through there, it goes through the light, then travels up 
the duct and all the way to the top where there's a second filter. Some people in the comments have remarked that the fan is not strong enough to pull the air through two filters, so let's measure that. I do have an anemometer, but I cannot just measure on the filter here. It doesn't. I have to build myself this strange contraption. Cutting some holes, then put the cardboard box up here. Put the filter back on the fan, that's the second filter, so it's in there, it looks like this. Close the box and all the air is now being led through this hole and I can measure here how much air exactly flows through both carbon filters. How much airflow do we need? The volume of the tent is 6.78 cubic feet. In order to have enough airflow we want this volume exchanged three times per minute. So all the air in the box is replaced three times every minute. And that means it's 20.34 cubic feet per minute airflow that we need. The computer in Tomato Tent regulates the fan speed depending on temperature and humidity. Right now it's 14%. Let's measure how much airflow that means. It's somewhere between 12 to 24. It's already enough airflow. Let's try some higher speeds. I'm gonna put it to 24, 29 and it goes to 49, 60, 40, 60. Let's check full power. So we go up to 100%, 100, 100 oh, that's impossible, okay, 99. And that goes to about 200 cubic feet per minute through two carbon filters. The fan used in Tomato Tent is a digital fan. They are much more efficient than standard fans in hydroponics, which use AC current, these use DC. They are more quiet, they are more powerful. We have no problem pulling air through two carbon filters. I know that many of you are waiting for Tomato Tent. I'm waiting on the PCBs now that I just showed you in this video. They are already in Sydney, Australia. I'm on the other side of Australia. I will update everyone as soon as I start shipping, which is very, very soon. And you get a tracking number. That's all I say in this video. Thanks very much for watching and talk soon.